and believe me, this man's going to be. It, it's, this is going to be like the ultimate. I'm going to be pure honest. And if he's so I'm going to be completely honest. I don't care anymore. So like, I feel like. <laughs> I've gone past caring. Killer Killer Podcast. Killer Killer Official. My name's Killer Keller. We are in the London borough of Kensington at Chelsea. Above us is the legendary Trellick Tower, towering over the whole of London. We directly below are in the number one Hall of Fame. This is the call to action. It's time to save Trellick Tower Hall of Fame. This is more than just an empty space. This is a people's space. This is a location for communities to come together and various activities, not to mention open air parties, as well as the art here, which is more than just art. This is a legal place for an otherwise illegal activity to flourish, graffiti. With over 40 years of arts and culture to be taken away from us in what seems to be a relatively small patch of land, Trellick has played host to some of the most important moments in street art history. Stockwell's a great example of a Hall of Fame that's managed to retain its integrity whilst working with the local community. This essentially is what we need from the Trellick Tower. As a location, this is featured in so many documentaries of arts and culture, not to mention blockbuster movies, the international artists that have come here to paint, to be a part of the community, as well as the surrounding boroughs. This place needs to be saved as soon as possible. Outside of the arts, this is a kids' play area where people young and old come together from the community. If this place is taken away and redeveloped, where are they going to go? This is a call to action to anybody that's been involved in the history of the Trellick Hall of Fame. Hashtag Trellick Hall of Fame. We've also got the handle Instagram Trellick Hall of Fame. This is going to be the hub for us to galvanise, get crew together, get people involved and make a difference. It's time for change. We want to keep this Trellick Hall of Fame alive and well into 2020 and beyond. Get involved, be a part of it. Thank you. Instagram UK Frontline. Beatbox created. Killer Keller. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller podcast. Right. We're going to switch on right now. For those of you that don't know the silky tones of this man, you clearly have not been on the podcast. Um, big shout out to Graffiti Kings, by the way, of course, each and every time. We have. A returning guest, uh, mostly because he's fucking awesome. And uh, if you don't know the man like Char, get to know. If you don't know, you better get to know. <sighs> How are you, sir? Remember, with a flow. You <laughs> done the <a> boy. <laughs> yeah, good. All good in the hood, gravy in the navy. Killer <laughs> podcast, baby. Come on, baby. Hey, last time you were here, we were inebriating ourselves. No, I, I was sober. You two was cattle. <laughs> Hold on a minute. <laughs> I mean, to, I'm bigger. It takes a lot more for me to get drunk. Mm. Just saying. There was a before and an after and a during as well. We yes. Definitely all on our way. You've got to wet your whistle a bit, yeah. That's it took right. us about three hours to get home. It's like a stand, it's like cutting edges, isn't it? It's like cutting the edges. Exactly. We started, that was a start, do you know what I mean? I mean, took the edge off. Yeah. <laughs> and the edges have kept on cutting ever since. Yes, they have. I'm good at cutting edges. Mm. How you been? What's been going good on? living the dream. You are. <laughs> no, I don't know about that. I've been in the same lockdown as everyone else, but I've been out most of the time, unlike you, soppy people. <laughs> yeah. You have been literally orbiting around most of the Mediterranean. Yes, I have. I've yeah. been doing tours. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> tours of different cities. Hotel tours. Hotel tours. Hostel <laughs> tours. Yeah, have you seen the film Hostel? Nothing like that. <laughs> yeah. Well, not yet, anyway. Yeah, that's next week's <laughs> Omnibus. <laughs> the 2020 is still young for that. Exactly. Um, for those of you who do not know The Mighty Char, uh, to, to, to put it in context, it's like, you know, he, he uh, somewhat of a, a kind of gatekeeper of Graf, let's be honest. There's not many people that have not met him, he's not, uh, not been influenced by him, or, uh, yeah, not... Been, like myself, totally and utterly like spellbound by his uh, his friendship and awesomeness. When you when you buy into Char as a friend, you get more than just the two D here. You get you get the whole videos, the bloody <laughs> everything sent you. What do you think of that? Do you like that? Uh, three in the morning. Oh, can I come out? Here? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Come outside. I'm not indoors, Char. <laughs> <laughs> and also big up Nick inside the place. Uh, Nick. Yep. Yeah, Nick's inside. That's good. And, uh, another compadre. Yes, uh, Nick. Uh, long time yeah. friend. Yes, long time friend. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Well, we did have a conversation, but previously, obviously. Yep. But um, and big shout out to Ties as well for the connect, hold tight ties all day. Um, but yeah, thought we'd uh, get a little bit, indulge ourselves a little bit more. Yeah, because last time it was good me and Ties, but like we, it was half and half each. Now I've got loads of stories to tell. Like today, I'm going to mm -hmm. tell you 
the normal day that we used to do. Damn every right, time. dirty baby. <laughs> yeah, no holes barred. Right, well, let's get to the start. Let's get. And we might please excuse us uh, as an indulging. Uh, you know, you might have heard a few of these uh, anecdotes before, but 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 please understand. Oh, I don't know about that. A to, I, think a to Z's. I think I'm going to make sure I don't repeat myself and I'll just do the other ones. Right, there you go. Because there's well. plenty more in the tank. <laughs> 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 right, let's start from the start. A young char. Yeah. Uh, when, where, are you, where are you from originally? Clapham Junction. Clapham Junction? Yeah, we don't stab them, they clap them. Yeah. Well, sh- Oi, so, okay, so yeah. Clapham Junction. Yeah. That must have been an insightful, like, train galore. Do you know what? I used to, do, I used to go painting Christmas Day and go and at all down because the, the trains were a bit hot back then. Like, Christmas Day. So we used to do the stations. So we used to bat all in the walkways, all that. Oh, me, Vino's, Cos, loads of us, like, batter them. Then do the track walks and go back every single station. And then a couple of years later, Zombie not done the underground ones, you know, from um, Clapham Commons just today, smashed that one. That was uh, uh, yeah. uh, uh, amazing, amazing pictures they were. So just, I, for me, it's like, as a kid coming up from Sussex en route to Victoria or Waterloo, yeah. like, it's one of these, they just leave an imprint on your mind, like, that FD Syria of between Croydon and Clapham Junction. Yeah. Just total and utter yeah, carnage. We used to do all the boxes of Zone. With zone. Mm. And then Cinch robbed, <laughs> robbed a, um, a drinks cart. And I was thinking, and he sold it a drink. I was like, my God, that's what I'm doing. So me, me and Zone live on, went to a bolt cutters, tried to get in one. The bolt cutters broke. And then police come from everywhere. So I had to go through the train, run under, I got away, luckily, but you didn't get no alcohol. That was a bit rubbish. <laughs> Gutted. Gutted. Yeah. <laughs> Funny. Yeah, well, in the way, you know, but the, the, the hindsight of like being out and about and doing, do you, is there, like getting by is part of the, the process, isn't it? Like, well, it's mainly crime. They just go, normal day of us, that's what a normal day would be. We go, we'll meet in Wimbledon, train station. Mm-hmm. Everyone will meet up there, about 20 of us. Then we go raising beer and paint. And then once we was in a shop, I think it was me, Rocks, and Vino's. And I'm getting loads of beers, getting loads of beers. And I heard the geese go, Jaddy, call the police. I was like, fuck. Look around. He's standing against the door. I'm like, fuck this. So I walked to the door, went to kick, kick, him, kick him. I went to, went to kick him to get him out of the way. But Rocks kicked my leg at the same time. He pushed it down and it smashed the whole window. So I had to crawl through the geese's legs, run up the road, <laughs> push some geese off his bike. And three of us were on a pedal bike up the hill and getting away from them. <laughs> Mate, that was a normal day. Crime goes hand in hand, doesn't it? Yeah, with graffiti, yeah, back in the day, yeah. yeah. Not so much now. My- no, no, not now. They're, if I'm going to be honest, they're artists now. Before we was graffiti criminals. There's a big difference. Mm, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, we used to surf the back of trains. I've surfed the roof of trains. I've surfed the side of trains from one stop to another. People banging on a window. Uh, we used to rip the windows off, throw the windows out the window. Uh, once, I remember going on the back of the train, holding on, and once 33 was there and he pressed the button, nearly deafened me. So I threw my beer against the window, not thinking it's going to hit that and hit me. Oh, no. So it hit that and hit me clean the head and my hands <laughs> went off the rail and I just managed to grab back on. So I've had a near-death experience loads of times. Do you ever think like, oh, fuck, like I've bitten off more than I can, can chew? My, once, there was Euston Tunnel with me and Pies between two trains, that was hell raising. I was like, oh, my God, that's close, all right? And another time... What was everyone who was running from knees that I think it was on the bridge and the bridge was going when the train went past. Oh, mate. Then I got electrocuted. That was a good one. Um, Do you like, you know, you know, we're with a character here that will openly, and believe me, this man's going to be, it's, this is going to be like the ultimate... I'm going to be pure <laughs> honest. Anything you say, I'm going to be completely honest. I don't care anymore. So like, I feel like... <laughs> I feel I've gone like, past caring. I feel like, like, yeah, I can ask you anything, literally yeah, anything, yeah. and there's nothing that's going to... No holes Bob. No holes barred on the Killer Killer podcast. Come on. Um, is there any moments where you're just like, you know what? I, I, I have to reevaluate my life because I nearly... I, not only did I nearly die, but other people nearly died as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, we was on the train to um, Brighton. I don't know if I said this story before, but I felt uneasy on the train. And then it was going slow, and I thought, what's going on? So I thought, I'm oh, getting off. Got off the next stop. And as it pulled off, they shot the train because someone jumped off the train. And everyone got nicked for attempted murder, what? apart from me, yeah. And everyone got all in paper suits and all that. I was like, I knew there was a reason why I got off the train. I had a feeling. So that was once, yeah. Well, that's some, that's, yeah, that's some, uh, oh. 
But sort we used of to, we used level. to, we used to sit on the slam doors, sit on the train, and if the ticket inspector was coming, I'd stick my feet up against the wall from Fast Train to Clapper Junction to Brighton, and my legs were killing by the end because I could hold the geezer pushing for the whole journey, like an hour. I was like, oh, I'm knackered. Do you, you, you know what I mean? I mean, yeah. obviously, like you was younger back then, but yeah. you know, you're you're a strong bloke. Yeah. Well, Who would sort of, fuck with you? But I was skinny and lanky then, so I could fit through gaps. Do you know what I mean? But not not now. I'm just built for comfort, not speed, people. <laughs> How much would you, you know, hold your hands up though to a situation? Well, to fight loads. Really? Oh my god, I, was, I used to love fighting, love it. Really? Yeah, I remember once. Oh, I don't know if I can say that story. That is, do you know what I thought? Get the face on Nick. Right <laughs> Nick I don't so... care, Lizzie. I don't care. Fuck it. <laughs> um, let's uh, let's get. So this was the younger you. Younger, I'm, I'm nothing like that now. So this was the younger you. So nothing like that. And, uh, Reserve now. That's right. That's right. Big and, cuddly teddy bear now. And a, and, a, and a worldly person too. I mean, well, yeah, I love traveling. Love meeting new people. Love speaking foreign languages. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So as as time went on, like, yeah. well, How did you become a part of FDC? How did you get into that? The, the, the fraternity there. Uh, when we was younger, I used, to, I used to go bombing in Wimbledon all the time. Yeah. And there was cons and scar tags. And I can't remember where I met cons. I think I went to Randy's house. I was with Dyer, I think. And Randy's house, we got to know each other and then just cracked on it. It was me and him everywhere all the time. Huh. So I was out of him most of the time. Yeah. It's just the, the whole force of FDC. Like for, for those of you who don't know FDC, is you just... Fuck the cops. Yeah. Fuck them cunts, Fuck everything. Them cunts, yeah, yeah. yeah, there's a lot of... I, and and you were you were tour de force, uh, arguably probably the, the 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 more established crew to rival DDS at the time. Yeah, yeah, we was That's everywhere. Ma um, what was his name? Manic. Yeah. Scar Manic. Loads of us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was the good old days. We used mm -hmm. to go right, and there used to be a shop in uh, Wimbledon Park where we used to keep the champagne at the edge, so you could stand on the edge of the, of the aisle. And take the bottles of champs without going around to get seen. So all that was left was just ones on the front. <laughs> May that shop got killed. Good, good. The racking culture. Oh, we never used to pay for anything. I'm Nothing. telling you now. I used to go out with not a penny in my pocket, and I'll be honest with you. I think I was an alcoholic back then because every day I used to wake up in the morning, be sick in the sink because I was just every day he was going brew raising, painting trains, nicking stuff and clothes. We used to go in Harrods, go straight down in Harrods, put a jacket on, zip it up, and walk straight out the door. Like ten of us. Straight in or straight out, didn't care. And did was, it, was it didn't care? Did that override any like uh, your, your your spidey senses that somebody's watching? You just didn't give. Didn't a give fuck. a shit. Like did once there was. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there's a geezer fell asleep on the, the geezer fell asleep on the train, yeah, and his, his, cre his credit cards fell out by accident, yeah. yeah. That's, that's what happens. That's what happens. They don't be drunk on the train. So I said, oh, let me pick it up for him and help him. Then it was my stop, so I got off, yeah, and by accident I had the card in my hand. All right. So we went shopping, and back in the day, there was a limit, like 50 quid or something, before you get, you get the phone call to the bank. Yeah. So we were out all night, I'm buying everyone's beers, I'm going down Soho, going, do you take switch, you bitch? Out of my head, yeah, <laughs> fucking mental. Uh, hip, what's that? Tower, is it Tower Records? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, in there buying all CDs and all that, aftershaves, all night. And then all the shops shut, so we track walked back to, from Victoria, all the way to Clapham Junction, we waited till nine o'clock for the shops to open. And because I'm feeling brave then, I thought, fuck this, I don't give a shit. I'm winning uh, Arden and Hobbs, loads of us. <laughs> so I bought <laughs> basketball jackets, shorts, T-shirts, trainers. I've gone in a fucking about 500 quid's worth. Put it through, did it. Oh, excuse me, your bank's on the phone. I thought, fuck. So I answered the phone. I went, yeah, he goes, excuse me, Mr. Alarm. I went, yeah, yes, 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 me. He goes, yeah, ask him because it's me. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. Okay, yeah, no, it's fine. I thought, bye. It's me. Yeah, it's fine. I thought, walked out. I thought, fuck that. So I walking fast, ran up my road to my house, got right near my door, went to put my key in, a 300 old bill <laughs> pulled up, really nicked me. But good thing, I stopped and put my stuff in the house before. So I didn't get all the other stuff on it, just the, just the stuff I had in hands from the, yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Mental. God, was is there ever is there a capping point? It was there ever a ceiling where you're just like, yo, like I can't do morally, I can't do this. No, I think it was mum saying you need to sort yourself out. Really, yeah. She said you need to get a job. That's why the bus driving come into it because I need to sort myself out. Yeah, for those you don't know about the bus stories, it's on the other ones. It's on the other ones. See? Yeah, see, see. we're just joining. It. We're bridging the gaps right here. Um, so, I, as as somebody that had gone through that transition of like you know teenage to adult, yeah, do you? Was let's we're talking creatively now, yeah. like so it went from bombing, racking, blah 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 blah. But you, as as a as an artist, you have a you have a real original London style. Yeah, 
You know what I mean? And whenever I see... You can tell it's mine. Yeah. That's good. That's what you need, that's what you need to do. Keep, keep yourself original. Yeah. But you can, tell it's, you can tell it's you, you know. Let's get into that a little bit. Like well, Shining Quest, if I'm going to be able to give my props to them, because they're the ones who sort of showed me how to do stuff. Because the first piece I've done was main, and oh my God, I thought it was the bollocks. But I saw a picture of it the other day, I was like, what the hell is that? <laughs> so when people send me stuff on Instagram, I go, oh, that's my first piece. And I'm like, that's really good, because mine was shitter than that. But we didn't have the good paint you lot have got, so. To be fair, yeah, and to be fair, you did repost my, my, my first ever piece. Good, we, better than my first piece. No, you said that, but then I'm, but now I'm gonna look at, I've already looked at it, like I'm thinking, oh yeah. I'm telling you. <laughs> you man, we should go paint it, I'll give you some pointers. Yeah, hey, listen, I'm, I'm ready, bro, I'm ready. Yeah. Um, real, real like funky, uh, the letter, the, the choice of letters that I guess you kind of, yeah. What was it about the letters you, you just... Because I've charred and I've been arrested for it and I'm in <clears throat> prison for it. Yeah. And Irie. So um, that's why I don't write it no more. I just do legal stuff to cow. Yeah, yeah that's it now. All right? That's right. That's it. So what's I saying? Um, so China Quest sort of give me, not just give me a star, but uh, like they used to do Wild Stars all the time. And I used to like um, Prime stuff. Oh. And uh, who was the other one? Yeah, Prime, yeah, Prime. The Wild Stars in uh, Labyrinth Grove. Jeez. So I just like doing the more intricate, the better. Do you like the... the, the, the the, the, the violence and the, the, the racking and the, it came in hand in hand. Do, do you think that was the, uh, somewhat of an, uh, an ambition as well? Because it, it, like you say, back in the day, it was like, actually, it was one of the same, wasn't it? Yeah, well, the writers back in the day we never used to buy any paint because never one had any money. Yeah. We used to all nick our paint. I've, I've, I've nicked loads of paint. Like, I had tons. My whole bedroom was full up with paint. Favourite spot? Uh, Leverhead, Leverhead B and Q. That was a smash. We used to go off of Leverhead. We used to run, and it's a good fucking half an hour run to the B and Q because you knew if you're the first one there, you'll get enough paint. <laughs> and there was another time in Dartford B and Q that I went in there. I took all the colours, walked out. I went fuck me, it's a piece of piss around it. Went back in there, took all the silvers. Come back out, I went fucking nothing. Else. Went back in there, and nothing else to take. I went fuck it, just take the golds. I don't even like gold. Filled the bag up of golds, walked out, the alarm went off. <laughs> The security, oh, guard, no, cents mate, the security guard chased me for miles. I had a luminous blue jacket on. I hid behind a billpost and he ran past. I had to get my jacket off, put it in the bag, try and, put, and get on a train station. I had poo in it, I swear. Yeah. <laughs> Got away though. How sustainable is it, it to, to be an authentic writer like that? Nowadays, there's too many cameras. Too many cameras. Yeah. You like, couldn't we, do it now, could you? No, nah, we used to go to um, Barking Yard. I was, I was dressed as Toot and Carmoon. <laughs> 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 with the headrest and all that on cutting the fence and everyone would tell you that's exactly what happened <laughs> who was with you? oh loads of us cos, tape, pies everyone zone we used to go like handed like firm handed mm. oh mate and um, even once zone come with a broken leg we had a broken ankle painting trains then we was once I'm in Malden I was painting the train and was so drunk the trackie come around the corner and we started throwing tins of paint at his head like what are you and then walking out go away he was painting the train we didn't care Obviously, uh, and right, so as somebody in 2020 right now, yeah. and I'm talking to you about this, right? You talk about b being firm deep, yeah. being a writer, being up against the odds still. Right, how much of that is resilience to the, the, the system? The system? Uh, and how much is it of, uh, it, it was a bit relaxed back then? No, no, it was, it's still hot and still, it got nicked all the time, but yeah. we just didn't care because it's like, we don't follow. I don't, I don't, anyone who tells it's the same thing. Someone says to you, don't do that, or there's a law against that. I'm like, who told you that? Where's that come from? Rebe being a re rebel, I think. Where's that come from? When I was in school, everyone telling me you're thick, you're dyslexic and all that. Sit in a corner, stand up. I was like, I'm not mm. fitting into your box. Don't tell me what to do. I'm doing my mm. own thing. Mm -hmm. Same as now. I had that as well. I was just, I'm dyslexic. Mm. Same as like Nick would tell you that like, we, we go anywhere. If he says, oh, I'll do 40, I'll do 50. If you go, go in a shop, wear your mask, I'll put the mask in my pocket. Mm. Stand now, walk over there. Mm -hmm. just, like get in the box, I don't go in the box. Yeah. Even in prison, they say to me, excuse me, sir, get, oh, tuck it. No, sir, they used to go, oh, mate, tuck your shirt in. I was like, mate, it ain't my shirt, it's your shirt. You give me the bloody shirt. Like I was <laughs> anything to fucking not do what they told me to. How far was that antagonizing? How far did, did you push Oh, I it? loved it. I just, the more anger I get, people, the better. I even do it now because I'm like, I'm a piss taker. But <laughs> sometimes you need to know when to stop because some people are more sensitive. <laughs> How far, like, give me a time when you wish you had stopped. Oh my, it's too many to even say, if I'm honest. <laughs> There's a few times I think, oh, went a bit too, too far. Yeah, maybe the other day I was cussing someone, it went a bit too far. You got the hump, and he even messaged me after and went, 
you took the piss right now. I mean, listen, I was only a bit of a joke. I was like, oh, I'm sorry. So maybe I did take it a bit far, but I can't even go into that conversation. <laughs> yeah. That's all right. This will be in arrears anyway. So yeah. yeah, that's all right. <laughs> Nick's looking like, oh, we... but you're a charmer, man. Yeah. You're a total charmer. And it doesn't feel like it, it feel, everything is, is said in uh, you got to be Just, pre- Yeah, you've got to yeah, be pretty yeah. sensitive, if you're, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, definitely. You got to take take a bit of a pinch of salt with me. But I can imagine it wasn't like that back in the day. I can imagine no. it was a lot more. Serious. I used to have two gold teeth, mm-hmm. two fangs, mm-hmm. which I done. Did I tell you about that before? Did I? No. I used to have two. It's what it was. Yeah. There was a deal in a dentist. Yeah. If you recommend a couple of people, everyone got it done. So you recommend someone. So I went up there. I got two gold teeth done, fangs. I said, "Yeah, I'm going to go to the shop. I'll pay you. I've done a runner. I didn't go back to Brixton. I had two gold teeth for ages. But what they'd done is stack them on top. <laughs> didn't file them down." So I couldn't even bite my nails or nothing. I was like... Well, oh, you're cutting your, your lips and everything. No, I just couldn't, couldn't even talk. I was like, I was like that. No. Yeah. So after four years of having them, and them sending me to prison because of them fucking teeth, they had to get rid of them. How many times have you been in prison? Three, twice. Uh, three, well, two, twice, but three was a, like a holiday break. No one knew I was there. Oh, right. Yeah. I rang my mum up. She went, where are you? I went, fucking prison. She went, I wonder where you've been for three days. <laughs> did your mom, like, what did your mum say about all this? Oh, she said crazy. Really? No, yeah. Does she... Did, did she chuckle at the idea of like you think she just knows you too well now oh no she's hopefully because she's up in heaven but yeah oh she's dead yeah oh, blessings come yeah. how, how long oh f- f- six years i think now okay okay rest yeah. in peace six years yeah rest in peace and dad about for two years now so. and rest in peace rest in peace yeah, fuck cancer yeah. <laughs> but but you're now on your own and on my own Hans bard no i was bard i sit now i'm I'll, I'll listen to myself now and he's got some good Judgment to do. So I listen to him. Charles, Charles. Yes, Charles, I'll do that. <laughs> yes, yes. If you want to represent your life in the best possible way, talk to Charles. That's yeah. the new podcast, right? When there. in doubt, give him a clout. <laughs> yeah, give him a clout. <laughs> but you, but, but on the same subject, you are you're an artist in your own right. Yeah, I, I love being. Do you know what it was? What is, people were um, sort of damping you down. So you tried to dump me down self to um, fit in with other people. Yeah. And I've done it for about, I don't want it's about eight years. Yeah. Like, that's why I haven't been graphing much, you know, because I was married and stuff like that. And you change with people. And you know, you think, now I'm an age, like, I'm not changing at all. Like, if you don't like it, tough shit. Yeah. Like, I like doing music. I like making, uh, doing graffiti. I like doing canvas. I like doing, doing jokes. I like doing silly videos. If I like doing it, that's what I'm doing. If yeah. you don't like it, tough shit. I'm not, my life is not to make you happier. My life is to make me happier. Yeah, that's right. And that's it's it. super important that you recognise that when you... Because some people, they just go through their life and they never actually... Some people don't never get out of their, their comfort zone, ever. They go, oh, no, no, I can't do that because you won't like that. As you get older, he... it gets harder as well. Yeah. You've really got to push for your comfort yeah, zone. Yeah, I don't give a... Like, yeah. like I want to go and do a yachting um, licence. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Bit of boats, you know what I mean? I'm a bit of a boat myself. I've got to go to the girls. In fact, a week on my boat. I'll just clean the deck. <laughs> 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 yeah. And uh, the, the, the rapping. The, yeah, the, rapping, the, singing. I sing the theme tune, write the theme tune, do the theme tune. Mm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Very much a part of like the... the if, I was to, if I was to... My top three writers, which I thought... Yeah, yeah. They Char, Ari, Yes, yes. You've done that. That embody <laughs> the, cult, the, the, uh, the street culture and uh, hip hop. I think you are definitely like in the category of like of, of, of the generation that, that, that that's, that's all hands. It's, it's mm. like you rap, you DJ. Yeah, you you do graph like you embody that. Like there's you, there's idea. Yeah, there's a couple of other people which I would almost certainly say, yeah, yeah, you you're from that generation and you represent that. Like, yeah. well, you can hear it in your raps as well. Yeah, which is break dancing. I broke my back in two places. I never go back to them two places. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I would never ever do break dancing. Do you know what? I, I can jump around and put my feet forward, and that's about it. I could do the moon dance, but, uh, moonwalk, but I won't do that here. Can do the moon dance too. Yeah, I moon, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're a couple of shivers. Yeah, we. <laughs> but it's true, isn't it? Like you, you come from that era. What, what, what other oh, what other writers do that? Like they, a couple of other. Do you know, not writers. many. Like oh, I'll be honest that. with you, this. What happens is, I think people, writers, some writers get to a certain age and they just go potty. Like half, half of them are either druggies or drinkers. Like honestly, there's loads of my mates yeah. that have gone down that road and you see them and they don't look too healthy if you're going to be honest. Do you think that's part of the course um, when you've g- gone... Too deep. Yeah, and you're slight, slightly disenfranchised with... Normal, the, like a yeah. yeah, little bit. Yeah, you need to know the fine line because it's not... Do you know what I mean? Like you can't just, yeah, fuck it all because you, when you fuck it all, there's nothing left to come back to. You need to at least have something to rely on, like a, a trade or something else. Because graffiti is good and all that, but you're not going to be a millionaire of it unless you're Banksy mm. and you draw rats with uh, parachutes on. But with with um, but with uh, with that in mind, 
particularly back in the day, to to be able to sustain because it's survival, really. Like. You've got, oh. you got to keep painting all the time. Like, it's hard to do, like, juggling this, juggling work, don't know. But the happiest time I am is when I'm painting, no stresses, don't think about anything. It takes your mind off everything. Mm. Do you know what I mean? But then there's all this, like, that, that's weird when you think about the juxtaposition of, like, right, zen level mm. of meditation, you're painting, you're mm. not thinking about anything else around you. But then the whole rest of your life is flipped with fucking chaos. Chaos. Wearing pants around your head, painting, sweating in... Can't see where you're going. Like before, I didn't know my eyes were getting bad until he was painting hay I think it was. And I was painting and painting next to me. The geezer's right next to me. I'm like, who's fucking keeping the lookout? I think Dondo was meant to. I went, did you see him coming? I went, no, I didn't. He was miles away. I was like, I need to get my eyes tested. He's got my eyes tested. I was like, no wonder I've been getting nicked a bit lately. I fucking can't <laughs> even see. <laughs> it's not where contact lenses. Yeah. Uh, he, like how, he, I had so many questions about being in your other night. So many... Like, what happens when you're face to face with someone like that? What is your first instinct is to like smack him? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, 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 I told you a story in the other one, the Arnold's Grove one, where the geezer came around the corner with the dog, and I ran through the through yeah. the um, water to get away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I jumped out the back of the bus. That's right. Yeah. And the police, and I'm, Cos reminded me that when the policeman said, "What's your name?" I went Ben. He went Ben. What? I went Ben Dover. <laughs> and I forgot I said that because he reminded me. I was like, oh, I don't remember. I did say that. So even then, I was a funny fucker. Hold tight, hold tight, cause all tight. Yeah, dogs, big up yeah, all the same. And of course, we're talking in retrospect now. This is these are all these are all in hindsight and uh, tried uh, convictions. You understand? Yeah, they're all gone. They're <laughs> done. I've done time. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And it's a different time now, isn't it? Do you know we used to do on the trains all the time? We used to when I was first started with speak in the Northern Lines. You can put your hand up between the middle. Open the door, but the glass used to cut your hand a bit. And you just sit all day in there. And when the train pulled in, we'd open the door, graffiti the other side, shut it. We used to do that on every single line, all the way up from morning till night time. Then we used to get the fire extinguisher, stick it in the door and press it as it's going through Victoria. So everyone on the train station gets covered in um, fucking fire extinguisher. Yeah. Then on the British rails, I could get in the back door because we had a key. I used, to get on the, get, I used to get on the mic and go, all change, please, all change. This train terminates here. And everyone would get off the train. Stop it. Yeah. Then I used to play, when I used to get off the train, I used to play Wu-Tang up there and we used to have a party <laughs> through the speakers. Stop yeah. it. Yeah. What, and you just to blam it up? Yeah, you know, yeah. They're off our heads, we was. Buddha, all of them. Up. How much of it was like jackass levels of cheering each other up? Oh, my God, the madness. Cos used to put on the windows. Like, we used to, in the end, we used to graffiti up so much, we used to just write stuff to piss people off. Feed your kids to crocodiles in big letters. Like, because there's nowhere to, more space on the train. We fed up doing our tags. Like, yeah, 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 because you yeah, did. Just mental. Inside, doing dubs on the inside. And then we was bushwhacking at um, Golders, near Golders Green. Burnt Oak, I think it was. Me, Zonk, and Snap, and all them like. How old are you then? How old, uh, that... 15, 16. So you were still young. Yeah. You live with your parents? Yeah. What happens when you, you know, just for those of you that are even considering this as... Like, Don't uh, do it, children. <laughs> right. You can end up like me. <laughs> um, what the, what's the longevity of, like, moving out of your yeah. parents and being a civilian? Yeah. And living in, a, in the, the means and ways that we all have to in a city. Well, you, got you can't. A, you, can't you can't, no, you can't. So it's mom, a youth, it's yeah. a youth this, this area you're talking about is literally it's for youth. Yeah, because I remember mum and dad used to screw my windows shut to stop me going out. Really? So I had to get screwed, unscrew it, put pillars in the bed and make it look like it's me and jump out the window. It's like an 80s romantic <laughs> chick flick. <laughs> Yeah, I had to go and see the train. <laughs> it was calling see, me. I have to make it happen. No, nah, it was only the end days mm. were really good. Mm. Like, I, live, I moved out once because my mate Asma got kicked out of his house. Mm. I wasn't homeless. I went, oh, I'll live with you. She used to live with white travellers in uh, Kew Bridge in a camper van. No, camper van. Like a, a camper, it's like, like a site office with a bed in it. Huh. Mate, the best time of my life. The geese had um, sheep. We used to get out in the morning, feed the sheep, smoke his free weed. Like, that was good. Really? That was, yeah, that was... Then we used to go squat parties when they first started because the me and cons were the first ones to go squat parties, just so you know. We were the first ones to have the, the number you ring up and everything. Then we took all the graphers there and then they smashed it all to bits and I think that no one's allowed there anymore. Mm. Yeah, that... that, that... Went to zero real quick with us lot there. <laughs> like, we're not all loving, hugging and all that. We're like, you talking to you? Yeah, like, it's no good. Some things mix and some things That's don't. That's the reputation that the writers Yeah, have, some right? things mix and some things don't. Do you know what I mean? I remember back in the day, especially when I was putting on nights, you know, I'd invite a couple of choice artists and writers, people come for, you know, that you kind of, kind of you rely on. You've got to tell them, as soon as they come in, yeah. don't graph up the toilets. Yeah, yeah. 
Because what happens, it doesn't matter where you are, your wedding, the thing, whatever, you straight away you go, Sham, put the fucking pen down, don't come and do graffiti up the kitchen. <laughs> you said Sham. Because he did, he was at my, <laughs> mate, see? Mate, he was at my wedding, I was like, give me, a, well, well, he'd be at my divorce party as well, but no, nah, he's at my wedding, I went to him, do not put, and spy, I went, do not graffiti anywhere in him. Of course I wouldn't do that, mate, I wouldn't do that. So, yeah. See, um, uh, uh, a man, a man of, of the, 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 the graph society, Anyone you've not met that you'd love to meet? Anyone that like you're like, yo, you know, I, oh, you know, me, really me and it would get on really well. I don't know about that, but do you know who I respect his stuff is it's snug. He's proper neat. Mm. Like, I haven't really got the patience for that. If he looks right on a, on a camera, that's enough for me, unless I'm getting paid for it. Then, because I'm not going to spend an extra three hours to get a line neat, just so it looks right. If a picture, you can't see the picture, that'll do for me, unless mm. you're paying me for it. Mm. Like, them days of sitting there going... Or over, I go. Yeah. yeah, but if you're getting paid for it, then yeah, it's a different shit. Or if it's on a canvas, it's different. Favorite Hall of Fame at the moment? At the moment, I like Sutton Pigs Alley's all right because it's close. Mm -hmm. uh, where did I paint the weekend? Oh, uh, Unigate. Unigate's all right. I like Brighton, you know, but the wind's too intense down there. Yeah, it just blows everything everywhere. Yeah. So you can double the amount of paint. You see, they're getting rid of uh, Trellick. Yeah, they are. I've, I've never painted there. What? I've never painted Trellick. How mad's that? I painted all the tube yards in London, just so you know. Oh, apart from one, Brixton. I need to do that. Not yet, no. 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 no you're not doing it, Char. <laughs> Naughty just, Char. No, not doing that. Not just, done just Trellick. No. How mad's that? I don't even know where it is. I've, how mad's that? Tell me about it. My mind's blown. I don't know where, even know where it is. It's down the road. It's close here. I don't even know where it is. Like, I know it roughly, but I don't know where it is. I couldn't go home, oh, you see? Like, oh, you've got to do it before it closes. I was going to, next week, I think. You have to. I was going to, I, like, I used to like the pit. That was good. That was Grove. That shit used to scare the shit out of me. That way. Johnny fights you've had there? Loads. See, Crackheads coming know. in, trying to fight, holding the door, baseball bats. Me and Sean and Chris have had about fucking five fights down there. I think I've told this story before, but um, I walked down there once naively. I was, so, I was so wet behind the ears. And there's me, you know, with my backpack on and about six of my mates, we were walking into this plot and we were like, oh, wow. <gasps> Lost our shit. Taking photos. Da -da. And I'm kind of looking around as we're doing it. And I'm noticing like, there's only one entrance in and one yes, entrance out. Yes, that's the thing. What the fuck are we doing in here? We used to have, we used to have baseball bats and everything painted in there. Yeah. And put them underneath the bags just in case it kicked off. Because underneath the West Way, there was a hash piece and a shiny crust piece years ago. Went down to go get some pictures and about 20 Moroccans come out of the thing, what are you doing? Taking pictures of graffiti. I'm like, oh my God. I mean, yeah, a luminous yeah. pink baseball bat. So it looked like we was up for a tear up anyway. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that was it, the chase off. But still, it's quite a, you know, I mean, nowadays it's a lot more gentrified yeah. and a bit more. But even though, you, I, I went down there the other day, someone was there, and I was like, oh, fucking great, yeah. you know, and went down there, and, and I hadn't been around for ages around under the flywheel yeah. thing. And even then, you kind of get a, an idea that, oh, shit, we were walking through and it was one way and one way out, really. It was yeah. like that there, yeah. too. Yeah, it's, it's changing now. Everyone's all like, oh, it's changing for, for the better in some ways, but it's changing for the worse because the areas that come up, Mm. Everyone whose shit goes to another area and it causes drama there. Yeah, only getting rid of Trellick is only going to add more mm. problems moving forward because, you know, they won't, they'll see it there. Where is it gone? Oh, it's gone now. So we'll go somewhere else. And, and do you know what else worries me as well? You know, Unity in Fulham, that used to be painted all the time. Yeah. And there was nothing there. Why was that? Why has the council chose to do that? That's right. Why don't you just put, like, I love that spot as well. Yeah. Yeah. I've done loads of jams there. Unity's, oh. Unity was fucking yeah. wow. Event. Yeah. I remember Event. Oh, we had some good days of Event. Go on. Tell me, I'll tell No, he was a nutter. I, like, we was having, I don't know if it was a fight or what. We threw a brick and it went straight through the bus window years ago. You know, you remember that. I can't remember the rest of the story, <laughs> thankfully. But yeah, it was something along them lines. Oh, and do you know what else we used to do? Go on. They was on a train and we go, listen, I'm going home. And they go, we jump on a train. He goes, it doesn't stop at uh, Clapham Junction, Fast Train or Earlsfield. I say, sod that. We used to pull the cord. I was good at that because I could be able to time it just in time. So I pulled on the platform and just jumped off. How much shit you're getting for fucking doing that? Yeah, of course. Well, it's fucking 50 quid off the bat, isn't it? And more than that, and we used to get the detonators at the, at the front and stick them on the railway lines at the train station to let them go off. <laughs> Mate, we've done some madness. Do you know what I mean? Throwing windows out the windows, open them out. Mate, and you know, the chairs used to be able to hide underneath the chairs when the ticket man came, because it was still skinny about them. Slit in there, they walk past and get back out. Yeah, yeah good days. Cos and Tate must have been pretty young when. Oh, they're about 13, younger than that. Because you, you must have been about, what, 18 tops? Yeah, I was about... Oh, no, I met Cos and I was about 16, so they were about 13 and 12. They were super young, right? Yeah. yeah. Takes the nut now, but yeah. <laughs> Bless you. Bless you. Take yeah. all day. Thank God. <laughs> yeah. Um, who else at that time was... Of a... Gear was all right. 
Yeah. Yeah, but he got nicked once and he's shit. Mm. I think he got nicked to me in Arnold's Grove. Yeah, all the way up there. And my mum rang up Shine and Chris said, you've got him into this shit, you can go and fucking bail him out. He went, all right, all the way to Edmonton Police Station. My God, that's miles away. Yeah. Edmonton, I don't know why they took me there. In there, oh, that's, I think that was in about three days or something. Jeez. Then there was one time when I got nicked for doing that. They didn't give me, no, it was another time. Oh, it was another time. They didn't give me any bail. And my mum had no mobile phones back then. Then they wouldn't give me a card. They wouldn't give me a smoker's because I didn't smoke then or anything. They didn't give me a smoker's pack or any cards. It took three days. I rang my mum up. I said, Mum, how are you doing? She went, oh, there you are. What you been up to? I went, I'm in prison. She went, well, at least you're safe. <laughs> That's what she said. Oh, bless her. safe. Oh, my God. And another time, right, I was in Wimbledon, right? And back in the day, you can nick them gap jackets, yeah, and stick them all in your wellies. I'll get a <laughs> full out in, and I'll go and cash them for a draw. <laughs> right? I've come out walking out, come downstairs, all chilled, talking to someone. I think Rox was there. Next minute, policeman goes, excuse me, sir, can I have a word? I said, of course you can. So we went around the back bit of the Wimbledon station, like a little alleyway. He goes, yeah, yeah, um, can I take your name? He said, yeah, of course you can. I went, but I oh, shot off, <laughs> running, because I thought I had all that shit on me. I turned the corner. As I got to the top of the stairs at Wimbledon train station, I'm thinking I'm away now. Yeah. Some Cavago hero stuck out his foot. It took me clean out. I've done the whole stairs flying, broke both my ankles. What? Yeah, running, running. Uh, my legs, my feet were like that. Uh, honestly, I was like, uh, uh. I got onto the train tracks, ran through the tunnel, managed to get over the fence, outside Sainsbury's, lying on the floor, and I was in so much pain, I was laughing like, uh, 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 for ages, all right? Ran my mum up, how are you? Went, oh, I think I broke my ankles. She said, what are you doing? I said, I'm waiting for an ambulance. Do you get arrested? I went, no. I said, all right, I'll see you in the morning. <laughs> Mate, mental. Stories mental. I've got, yeah. Does it, did, does it ever tire you? That, yeah. The whole, that whole... It, looking over your back, I'll be honest with you now, it's affected me because I, can't, I go everywhere and I look around like a nutter and look for the exit and like, that, I think that maybe that's affected me because you're highly strung all the time. Yeah. So you never chilled out. The only time, only time I've ever chilled out really is when I'm in a foreign country. Because you're on your own and you're away from the melee. When yeah. I'm here, it's like 100 miles now, like that. Even in the pub looking, I can't stop looking around. Just because of anxiety. You. Definitely, I could definitely get anxiety, yeah. Bad anxiety, for honest. Really? Because of all this shit. Do you think that's part of the course of a writer? Or is that just you? It, no, no, I think it's, that's proper writers get anxious. I mean, ones who just do canvases and walls, what they got to get anxious about? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Paranoia. Definitely got paranoia, yeah. Who said that? Yeah. <laughs> and that's what, I guess that's what creates confrontation as well. Because yeah. Because that constant, like, looking over your shoulder and like, having a reaction to something. Yeah, definitely, yeah. But I'm already hardly trying to look like, like I told you before on the other podcast, two men walked through the carriage and they went like, to the back, I went police and I pulled the doors and jumped off. But that's because I'm highly strong and I'm like, nah, they're better built. I could look at, I can, I can spot police officers from miles away. Not right now as it goes because they're getting younger and younger. Mm. But when I was younger, I was on point. Like, psh, he's old Bill, he's old Bill, he's old Bill, easy. Really? Yeah. And it never failed you? Never failed me. No, no, no. Mm. But, but now because they're younger? Now, I saw one the other day just like a Muslim. I was like, what, they have big beard? I was like, Matt, I would never have thought he was old, Bill. Wow, really? Yeah, they're getting smart. Wow. Even though their bu budget's getting cut, they're getting fucking smarter. But do you reckon as younger writers, they can see the older guys now? No, but the writers now aren't like the other writers. Much, some of them are, some of them are, like big up Vans and all them lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Type yeah. of Vans, yeah. Um, what, so you, 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 your feeling is like they've just got a little bit more, they've got a bit more savvy. They, yeah. They're a little bit too savvy they they well i guess to their credit they yeah they, to their they, credit they, i don't know about credit but yeah but you know what i mean do you know what i mean saying what i mean is like in this day and age where you've got technological advances that are totally progress shit that we don't even know about they've got loads of stuff we they've don't got loads know about. of stuff so they are completely you know they've got four steps ahead you know they've got some gel they can fire on your window and they can hear whatever you're saying in the house no way yes and they've got my mate had this i want to say something a tennis ball yeah i put something in a tennis ball and they throw it up to your window or, or your, to your guttering it stays in the guttering and records every single conversation you have in your house stop the fucking and that was about six years ago he done that so imagine what they got now mate that's a, that's a podcast in itself and everyone putting up pictures of them selling weed and all that you lot of divs mate that's right. a blobcast you know shoot pod, they, shoot. yeah yeah <laughs> podcast yeah <laughs> you got it before me hey. uh, wow that's and that's some other shit yeah it's mental like years ago right we used to do um I was cool oh I yeah I was cool uh, just up the road. That was cool. And um, every time we used to paint there, I've met like, a few writers at the fence cutting it, uh, to be honest with you. Ache mm. and um, Touch, Big Up Touch. He's Old out soon. Touch, yep, soon. Old tight. We used to go, after we painted, we used to go to the, like a little shed, sleep, sleep in the shed all night. Like there used to be a kettle in there, it was a tracky shed. We spend, I've had like three days in there before. Get wow. up every morning, go and do the trains and come back in there. Yeah, good old days. Yeah. 
Good old days. When did the good old days stop, though? When was it for you that it started to get... Uh, yesterday, about 12 o'clock, you went to bed. You done no room by it. Right, so clearly, like, <laughs> we're talking, like, 90 zero, right? So at what point was it when you moved out? Was it when you had to, you know, live that civilised, self-sufficient think, life? I was when I got it? a job properly, and it wasn't yeah. enough time to be doing that. Because, <clears throat> like, a job takes over, and you've got to pay for stuff from kids and houses and mortgage. Mm. Like... Everyone tries to put you in the same bracket as everyone else. Like, you've got to get married. You've got to have a kid. You've got to do a house. You've got to pay. But I want more to my life than that. To be mm. honest, you know? I'd rather mm. live in a camper van now yeah. and go and do what I want to do. Do you think more but, people are doing that now? Yeah, I think you, there's a lot more attitude yeah. towards you know that. It is, it? It was, it, online, there's a thing about a um, uh, test they've done or, um, on rats, yeah, that they put in like um, projects like that we mm. are now, like in the city, mm. and they all went crazy after a little while. The same thing's happened to us a lot now. That's, That's right. why people have got depression, anxiety. Everyone's on bloody antidepressant tablets. Blame the because, internet. Yeah, you know because that. we're not, this is not built for us, this lifestyle. We are meant to be growing vegetables in a field, chilling out of nature. Mm. Well, like, who told us we'd be in high-rise buildings? Mm. Mental. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Who's a, oh, yeah, sorry. They don't teach us to uh, grow anything in school. They don't teach you how to do the tax loopholes like the posh people do. Mm. So what are they actually teaching you in school? Just how to be a donkey and listen to people. Put your hand up when you want to go piss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not for me. Things like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, graph, for me, when I think about it in a city context, it's it's a calling of people and their emotions, like to be heard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's like, I like one thing I'd like to do, I do music and stuff like that. It's like for years when I'm gone and I'm not here no more, my boys can Google me and go, there's dad. Do you know what I mean? So he's always got something for them mm. to look at. Mm. So you're always around. Don't matter if you're not here anymore. Do you know what I mean? It's like, because yeah. how many times do you like parents, anyone dies and you haven't got enough pictures? You go, oh, I wish I took more pictures. Oh, I wish yeah. I'd done that. I wish I'd done a video. I should have done. Do you know what I mean? You've got to just embrace life and just do it because you don't know when sure. it's going to end. For sure. Do you know I mean? I've had loads of near death experience. Blown my eye, broken back, broken ankles, broken arms. Should have been a breakdance. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Would have won every competition. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. Literal breakdance. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, what's he done now? <laughs> Fucking elbow. Yeah. Would you change anything? Oh, do you know? Oh, I don't know. The spray can and the kettle was like monumental. So That's the other podcast as well. That When it blew my head up, honestly, I'll be honest with you, I had flashbacks. Like, oh, show me your eye. You have to. No. Yeah. I had a flashback, yeah? Every time the kettle ink. Hmm. I went, Honestly, wow. it, was like, it was like shell shock. And I didn't yeah. realise how bad it was. Because even now, like, even enough to talk about it, I go, oh, and I get like a bit of a flashback. So that was, that was a whole explosion in my head and it proper nearly killed me. Yeah, yeah. And that was the blunt side that done that. The other side was all jagged. Mum went, as it exploded, it turned. If it didn't turn, it went straight from my head. That must actually fuck with your head. Yeah. Literally and physically yeah. and mentally, yeah. That must play with you like, wow, what if... And another time that was a bit scary is when I was in Balham, I was painting off the platform. And the police started running down. I was like, fuck. So I ran off and I could hear, shh. I thought, let me turn. As I turned, the train was here. I went, stood back and the train was that close to me. I could see people's face going, like in a train. I was like, fuck. No. My heart, brrr, I was like, my, and it honestly, it took me about three weeks to get over that. That yeah, was the closest death experience that one was. Well, did it just stop as you were? No, it was speeding past. I was like, fuck. And I, honestly, it must have been that much. Because I didn't hear it. I heard, shh. And I thought, let me look. Then when I looked, the light was there. I went, if I stood back two steps, I was like, my God. See, that? I think that's every... <clears throat> to be fair, though, I think that's everybody's... If you were to consider that lifestyle, it's the only most intense, worst-case scenario. Well, it, well, I did another story. I went somewhere. Um, I had a ladder, and I was going to cross the train tracks. And there's a big ladder. And the train started coming. I was thinking, please do not hit the fucking ladder. I was spinning around like fucking Charlie Chaplin. But I got across the other side, yeah. So, See, that's so right, I'm still here, Mum. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's you're dealing in a dangerous sport. Yeah, yeah. Just not. It's not for the now. It's all right, but back then it wasn't for the faint hide. Like stand on little ledges like that, hold your thing, paint this Streatham Hawk, Streatham Hill. Like honestly, about that much of brick, Clapham Junction bridges. Like it's ridiculous. Another geezer I used to paint with a lot was called Sober. Mm. That geezer has done reaches I'm like I don't know how you got up there the ledge was that big and he'd done it all across from America painted quite a lot of him and Sensor Sensor I've done a few mm-hmm. trains of him he from Australia Perth I think he's from he'd done some fucking reaches I was like where the hell did he get up there and I was the one who used to do them high ones until Cons fell off a roof and broke his ankle oh my god that's another podcast um, most happiest happiest moment for you uh, I don't mean 
Oh, do you know what was good? I painted the Leicester... I remember this, yeah, this is a good one. I painted the Leicester Festival, yeah, and the TV cameras come down and all that. And they're talking to me, I've done an Indian chief <laughs> character, Irie, mm. and the woman went, oh, what does that say there? I went, no, it's just tight vaginas, which you did, because it was TV, yeah, tunnel vision. I went, tight vaginas, she went, that's disgusting, it was live on TV as well, I started laughing. Yeah. <laughs> that was a good one. Well, like Leicester TV, yeah. lo local news as well. Yeah, like. but she thought she, she picked the wrong person to talk to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, would, it have, would it have been, like, uh, as appealing, had it not been for the extracurricular lifestyle? No, because I've met so many people that I even speak to now, proper good friends that I love dearly. I don't see them as much as I used to, but like always keep being in contact. Arrow, like I text him, how you doing, bro? Like all of them, like mm. my good pals. Like, ties you, you Listen, uh, yeah, sorry to interject. You're, you're one of my uh, reference points because as somebody that does podcasts, and I'm not, I don't, there's no preferential treatment ever because I'm just a super fan. Mm. Um, and I have people come in and I think. I feel like you're very much the a good meter of people that it's proof that you can be a writer and get on with everybody. Yeah, of course you can. Yeah, listen, you know I mean? I, it's, my days of arguing with everyone, but, but the thing is, we never argued amongst ourselves. We always argued with everyone else. Mm. So I've always had, I've stopped loads of fights. I've stopped people getting bullied, and everyone knows that as well. Like, no, leave them alone. Like, huh. yeah, it's just, I've just I, I get on with everyone. Is that, no, it's is nice to be nice. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Mm. Absolutely. Is there a zero tolerance to that? That bullying thing? And yeah, the, I don't like that. Yeah. Like, like I'm big, and I could bully whoever I want, but I don't do that. Mm. Like, I'm, it's nice to be nice. Yeah. Whatever you give out, you get back. Yeah. So I keep giving money out, and fuck all comes back. <laughs> Where's my 10p, John? <laughs> <laughs> You're a good man. Yeah. And it's a pleasure to have you back on, my brother. Pleasure to be here. A few more stories this time. Come on, I'm let's not, get in then. Do you know what I mean? I've got a few, but like, at least mental, mate. Sh oh, shop windows. Oh, did, did, did I say about the shop windows last time? <laughs> did I not? <laughs> no, no. I was coming out the police station for doing graffiti, and I was walking up the road, and I see this geezer with a brick. I said, what are you doing, mate? He went, what are you doing? You old Bill? I went, no. He went, that's good, I'm going to smash the shop window. I went, sweet, let me get a brick. So we shop, smashed the shop window together and we got loads of glasses. Yeah, that was what another What comes one. first? Does, it come, does, does that kind of fun come first and then the graffiti second? Or oh, no, say? no, it was graffiti first and then money after. Money after. Yeah. But back then you could get spray paint and nick it all. Like, we had Stockholm, was it Stockholm Motors? Oh, my God, we had a fight in there. Spray paint. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you know what? We've had so many fights. Oh, there's another one. We was nicking... He was nicking, no, Rick, yeah, Francis, all right? I don't know where he is now, it's him for years, all right? He used to go, char, char, I've got a new nicking technique. I went, raising technique. I went, what's that then? He, would, he had two pairs of jeans on. So he had tucked the ones in his socks, then he had the ones out here, but he'd do the zip down. So he'd get beers and all that, stick it down his trousers, so he had it all in his legs. The Indian, Indian geezer clocked him, we had a fight, bottles in the air, Indian geezer over the counter, uh, speak was running out of the shop. I'm dragging him out. To, he left his shoe in there. We're fighting for about half an hour, Clapham Common, Londis. He got away. He's run back in there for his shoe. I said, like, leave your shoe. And he got nicked. <laughs> yeah, he got nicked, yeah. You got to know when to stop. You got to know when to go. <laughs> you got to know when to go. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Oh, what's the future? What's the future of Char right now? Oh, I'm just going to keep making music, doing funny videos. Check me out on Char the Governor. You've done Char the Governor Instagram. Come on. That's the plan, dude. Just trying to be happy. Yeah. I mean, get fit, look after the kids and be happy. And uh, and get your yacht licence. Oh, but I want to really want to do a yacht, yacht licence. Really. I want to see you looking like Duran Duran. <laughs> do, do you know I want to know? I know that I want to do my yacht licence because even the other day I put a roof down in a car and I stood on the seat and I hold it like I was on my own boat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Playing Rio really loud. Yeah, that. <laughs> that <Del> boy. <laughs> I want to see that. Yeah, yeah. I want to see that. Brother, it's a pleasure having you on. Thank yes. you so much again. Always a pleasure to come down, mate. Show some love. That's it. Yep. So Sweet. you got your stories worth there, people, the no mighty old, child. No so. whole bars. No whole bars up in the Killer Killer podcast trap house, all right? So stay lucky. Share, share, like, tell a friend to tell a friend, all right? Keeping it grimy out here, all right? Killer Killer podcast. Stay lucky, people. You done the rebuy. Yeah. Peace. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Good.